Welcome to a new episode in Matt Skill series on Gradle and Android Gradle plugin APIs. In the last episode, you learned about writing your own plugin and using the new variants API. In this episode, you'll learn about Gradle tasks, providers, properties, and basics of I.O. Next, you'll take your plugin a step further and learn how to get access to various built artifacts using the new artifact API. Let's jump in and start coding. Let's say I want to build a plugin which automatically updates the version code specified in the app manifest with the Git version. To achieve that, I need to add two tasks to my build. The first task will obtain the Git version and the second task will use the Git version to update the manifest file. I'll start with creating a new task called Git version task. This class needs to override default task and implement the annotated task action function. Here I have some code which queries the tip of the Git tree. Since I cannot cache this value, I want to store the version info in an intermediate file so other tasks can read and use this value. To do this, I need to use a regular file property. Properties can be used for task inputs and outputs. In this case, the property will act as a container to represent the task output. I create a regular file property and annotate it with get output file. Output file is a marker annotation which is attached to the getter function. With this, the property is marked as the output file for this task. Now that I declared my task output, let's jump back into the task action where I can access the file and write the text which I want to store. In this case, I'll store the git version that will be the output of this task. To keep things simple, I replace the git version query with a hard-coded string. Now that the task is ready, let's register this task in the plugin code. First, I'll create a new plugin class called example plugin and implement plugin. If you are not familiar with creating plugins in the build source folder, make sure to take a look at the previous videos in this series. Next, I'll register the git version task and set the output file property to an intermediate file in the build folder. I also set up to date when to false so that the outputs from the previous executions of this task will not be reused. This means that the task will be executed on every build since it's never be up to date. After executing the task, I check the output file under the build intermediates folder. I can verify that the task stored the value which I hardcoded in the task. Now, let's switch to the second task, which will update the version in the manifest file. Let's call this task manifest transform task. I'll use two regular file property objects as the inputs of this task. I'll use the first regular file property to read the contents of the output file which is generated by the git version task. I'll use the second regular file property to read the manifest file of the app. Next, I can replace the version code in the manifest with the version code stored in the git version variable from the git info file. Now I can write the updated manifest. To do that, first I'll create another regular file property for the output and annotate it with get output file. Note, I could actually use the variant output to set the version code directly without having to rewrite the manifest. But I'll use this property to show you how to use artifact transformations for the same effect. Let's go back to the plugin to wire things up. First, I get the Android Components extension. I want this new task to run after AGP decides which variants to create, but before values are locked and cannot be modified. The onVariants callback allows me to set properties which will be used to configure the task's input before the execution. I can use providers to wire the properties to other tasks that need to perform time-consuming operations such as reading from external inputs like files or the network. I'll start with registering the manifest transformer task. 
This task requires the git version output file, which is the output of the previous task. To access this property, I'll use a provider. A provider can be used to access a value of given type, either directly by using the get function, or by converting the value to a new provider using the operator functions such as map and flat map. When I look back at the property interface, it implements the provider interface. You can lazily set values on properties and later lazily access these values using providers. When I look at the return type of the register function, this returns a task provider of the given type. I'll assign this to a new val. Now back to setting the input to the manifest transformer task. When I try to map the value from the provider to the input property, I get an error. The lumped argument to map takes one value such as t and produces another value type such as s. However, in this case, the set function expects a provider. I can use the flat map function, which similarly takes a value such as t, but this time produces a provider of type s instead of producing the value s directly. Next, I need to tell the artifacts of this variant to use manifest updater and wire the manifest as the input and the updated manifest as the output. Finally, I call the toTransform function to transform a single artifact type. When I run this task, I can see that the version code in the app manifest is now updated with the value in the git version file. Note that I didn't explicitly ask the git provider task to run. The git provider task is executed because this task's output is used as the input to the manifest transformer task, which I requested to run. Let's add another task to see how we can access the updated manifest and verify that it's updated successfully. I create a new task called verify manifest task. In order to read the manifest, I need to access the APK file, which is an artifact of the build task. To do this, I need to set the build APK folder as the input to this task. Notice this time I'm using directory property instead of file property because the single artifact APK object represents the directory where APK files are placed after the build. As the second input of this task, I need another property of type build artifacts loader, which I'll use to load build artifacts instances from metadata files that describe the files in the APK directory. Builds can produce several APKs when you have native components, various languages, and so on. The build artifacts loader abstracts the process of identifying each APK, as well as their attributes like ABI and languages. Now it's time to implement the task. First, I load the build artifacts, make sure that it contains only one APK, and then load this APK as a file instance. At this point, I can access the manifest in the APK and verify that the version is updated. To keep things simple, I'll only check if the APK exists, as a reminder to check the manifest here and print a success message. Now back to the plugin code to register this task. In the plugin code, I register the new task as verifier, pass in the APK folder and the build artifacts loader object of the current variant's artifacts. This time, when I run the task, I can see that the new task loads the APK and prints the success message. Notice, again, I didn't explicitly request the manifest transformation to happen. But because the verifier task requested the final version of the manifest artifact, the transformation happened automatically. There are three tasks. My plugin first checks the current Git version tree and stores that information in an intermediate file. Next, my plugin uses the output of this task lazily, using a provider to update the current manifest file with the version code. Finally, my plugin uses another task to access the build artifacts and check if the manifest is updated. 
If you want to see more samples like this, make sure to check out the Gradle Recipes repository on GitHub. That's it! Starting with version 7.0, Android Gradle plugin offers official extension points so that you can write your own plugins. With these new APIs, you can control build inputs, read, modify, or even replace intermediate and final artifacts. To learn more and to keep your builds efficient, make sure to check out the documentation, resources, and recipes, which are all linked in the notes below. See you next time.